explanation preparation. Today with us, Professor Shahji Kharat from Ferguson College. He will deliver a talk on the very important and basic subjects in physics, that is mathematical methods in physics. Along with us, we have Professor Bharat Kanmude, Chairman IAPT Subregional Council Pune, and Professor Varsha Joshi, Vice President, IAPT Subregional Council Pune. So now I would like to request Professor Bharat Kanmude to introduce the today's speaker. Yes. Please, sir. Uh, welcome, dear friends, and uh, good evening to you all. Uh, today with us, uh, Professor Sri Shahaji P. Kharat is associate, uh, sorry, assistant professor uh, in the Department of Physics in Ferguson College, Pune. Uh, Shahaji completed, Shahaji sir completed his BSc from Anna Saheb Magar College, Hadap sir, 2010. He was my student at that time. Then from University of Pune, Department of Physics, he completed his MSc in 2012. And immediately at the time of MSc only, we are doing his MSc second year, he cleared the net examination. So UGC CSIR net examination was very uh, cleared very early uh, at his uh, teaching days, uh, learning days only. Then he joined the Ferguson College and uh, uh, he is pursuing his PhD in the Department of Physics in University of Pune. Very soon he will get a doctorate degree there. Along with his academic career, he is a state uh, player for the Kabaddi in the uh, uh, Kabaddi and he also keeps interest in all almost all areas, almost many areas. So today he will discuss one of the important topic of this particular NGP preparation examination that is mathematical methods of physics. Right from his degree days or his college days, I am knowing him and his command over mathematics. So I'm sure today's his talk or his discussion on the important topics and questions and problems in this NGP examination, you'll find it will be very interesting and useful for the preparation of NGP examination. So once again, I welcome you all, students, as well as my colleague, Dr. Sandeep Kakade, sir, uh, Professor Varsha Joshi, ma'am, and uh, uh, today's speaker, Shahji Karat, sir. So let's begin his session with uh, his uh, presentation. Please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to request Professor Shahji Khara from Ferguson College to yeah, deliver his talk of mathematical methods in physics. Please, sir, you can start your session. OK, OK. Uh, so thank you, uh, uh, Professor uh, Bharat Kangude, sir, and Professor uh, Sandra Kakde, sir. I am also thankful to Varsha Joshi, madam. Now I will uh, start a uh, lecture on mathematical methods physics and also thank you uh, Indian Association of Physics teacher, and uh, uh, I will be delivering this lecture on mathematical methods in physics. So uh, here uh, in uh, uh, NGPE examinations, there are uh, some topics which are very important. So one is uh, vector analysis and its related uh, few problems and another is uh, you can say coordinate system and i will discuss some problems which are asked in the previous year question papers uh, uh, one by one okay so <clears throat> so we will uh, start with the vector analysis so uh, in vector analysis basically uh, we should uh, be aware what is the vectors so uh, we have uh, from childhood onwards we have uh, been knowing what is a uh, scalar uh, scalar you can say uh, scalars and vector vectors but here we will uh, see a different angle so we will see uh, what do you mean by scalar triple product and then uh, we will see some uh, basic concepts which are you can say uh, very important as far as the mathematical methods in physics is concerned and this ngp examination is concerned so uh, scalar triple product in scalar triple product we have uh, let's say a dot b cross c this is uh, defined as a, a scalar, uh, you can say, a product. So here uh, we should uh, see this scalar product as like this. So let's say this is my vector b, b bar. And let's say this is my vector c bar. So let's say these vectors uh, a bar and b, uh, sorry, b bar and c bar are in one plane. 
and if we take the cross product of b cross c so this b cross c will be a cross product where the uh, you can say the uh, magnitude and magnitude uh, is let's say uh, magnitude of b into magnitude of c and the uh, a sign of angle between them sin theta and n cap where this n cap direction is direction which is perpendicular to this plane formed by this b and c and we have to use a right hand rule and we have to go from b to c so we have to use b cross c and uh, we will get this product b cross c uh, and n cap is the direction which is given by right hand thumb so uh, this is you can say uh, so b cross c sin theta this is the area swept by this uh, parallelogram formed by this b and c so b cross c basically tells us the area of this plane which is formed by the b and c this uh, plane now uh, if we uh, see at a dot b cross c so let's say uh, a vector vector a is there okay so let's say vector a is like this and there is angle between let's say angle theta uh, some angle theta or phi is between uh, uh, this uh, normal vector n bar and this is let's say a bar vector so we will get uh, you can say a dot b a dot b cross c is nothing but a, well, you can say a volume of a parallel pipe formed by this three vectors okay so this is your b vector b bar vector this is c bar vector and this is let's say a bar vector so these three vectors are there and whatever a dot b cross c is there this is the volume you can say volume of this parallel point well volume of this parallel point okay so basically ax or uh, basically these vectors are given by let's say a bar is a vector which is given by let's say ax i cap plus a y j cap plus a z k cap like this way these vectors are given a x a y a z similarly b x b y b z and c x c y c z vectors are given so whatever value is there that value will be the value uh, volume of the parallel point now if a dot b cross c is equal to zero then three vectors are coplanar so this property is very important because there are number of questions asked in the examination based on these properties sometimes three vectors will be given and we have to find out whether these three vectors are coplanar or not so in order to show whether these vectors are coplanar or not we have to find the vector triple product and we have to show that whether these are you can say uh, coplanar or not if this uh, a dot b cross c is not equal to zero immediately we can conclude that these three vectors are not coplanar okay similarly there is one more product that is defined and that is called called as vector triple product which is defined as a cross b cross c so where uh, you can say uh, this is a uh, different from uh, about triple product okay about triple product is you can say a cyclic in order so we can write a bar dot b cross c okay which is equal to let's say uh, c dot a cross c or sorry c dot a cross b or let's say b dot c cross a so we can write this uh, you can say product in cyclic order but this is not true for this case because a cross b cross c okay which is not equal to let's say c cross uh, c cross a cross b a cross b which is not equal to let's say b cross c cross a okay so these things are not equal because 
a cross z cross c uh, okay this gives us uh, you can say vector this is actually basically a vector this is volume so volume is scalar quantity this is volume of a parallel pipe which is a, a scalar basically it is a scalar but this is a vector so if it is a cross v cross c it is a vector in the uh, you can say plane uh, uh, in the plane b formed by the b and c similarly c cross a cross b will be a vector which is in a plane formed by uh, a and b and similarly c and a are uh, you can say a third quantity this b cross c cross a cross uh, a bar this will be a uh, vector which is in a plane formed by c and a so basically these are uh, uh, vectors and above quantities a volume which is a scalar now there are two important quantities which are defined in physics which is uh, first is let's say scalar field and second is vector field so we will see what do we mean by scalar field so a scalar field basically gives a physical quantity which is a scalar so uh, you can say uh, in a region of uh, some region of space is there and in which this quantity will be given and that is your a scalar field so uh, for example temperature so let's say i have some source okay some hot source is there okay some so hot source is there Let, let's say a uh, spherical bulb is there so around that a uh, spherical bulb the uh, if i uh, draw a circle uh, if i draw a sphere uh, on that sphere there will be uh, equal temperature at each and every point so these are you can say isothermal curve okay so this these curves will be isothermal curve isothermal means the curves on this curves the temperature is constant this means temperature is constant okay so uh, there are some fields uh, for example uh, temperature is uh, one field where uh, it has no direction but uh, we can uh, sense that temperature and uh, at particular point the temperature may be constant or it may change uh, with the different uh, uh, points so depending on that scalar field is defined so there are some equipartition uh, equi uh, sorry uh, equipotential surfaces for example uh, uh, sorry i have written equipartition it is equipotential surfaces for example let's say i have some charge which is positive let's say positive q charge is there and around that charge i have some surfaces if i uh, draw a sphere around it and if i define uh, you can say potential energy on this uh, on these points so the potential energy is defined as you can say you know, potential at this point let's say point a it is defined as amount of energy required to bring a infinite uh, infinitely small test charge q let's say small q to this point a so if i bring this uh, test charge at this point or this uh, our second point let's say point b or let's say point c so at each and every point amount of energy required will be same and equal so uh, because of this reason so this surface so this pair spherical surface will be called as equi uh, equipotential surface secondly if i if i draw a second circle with different radii let's say this radii is r1 if i draw a second surface with different radii that is r2 then again this uh, second surface is also defined let's say this is a sphere i have not drawn it like a sphere but assume that it is a sphere but this second surface will be again equipot uh, equipotential that potential will be different from the earlier uh, this r1 corresponding this v1 potential so v1 is different from v2 so like this way scalar fields are uh, you can say important class now we will go to vector field so vector quantity for example uh, electric field and uh, you can say field uh, field line do not uh, cross each other so there are some fields which are represented by vectors so for example let's say i have charge q so corresponding field will be electric field will be there let's say that is electric field e is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught let's say corresponding charge q upon r square so if this electric field is there so this electric field so it will be represented by a vector quantity r bar so let's say that charge is positive in that case let's say positive charge is there and electric lines of force will go away from this field okay okay so this is you can say positive charge and for negative charge also we have electric lines of force which goes towards the negative charge 
So this is our, you can say, convention. Uh, we consider positive charge, uh, the electric lines of force goes away from the positive charge and uh, it comes towards the negative charge. Okay, now uh, there is one important thing that you should remember here. So closer the lines, okay, here, if I measure the distance between these lines, so these lines are closer here, okay, these lines, distance between these lines is closer as compared to this line. So let's say this is one and this is two. So distance one is closer as compared to distance two. That means at distance uh, at one, the electrostatic, uh, uh, you can say potential is higher as compared to uh, at point two. So same is the case for the uh, negative charge. But in case of, uh, you can say, uh, mag uh, electric field and magnetic fields, uh, so they will not cross each other. So what is the meaning of crossing of the magnetic field? I will just quickly explain with respect to uh, uh, by using a bar magnet. Let's say North Pole is there and South Pole is there. And I have a electric uh, magnetic lines of force. So let's say this is, let's say magnetic lines of force are defined like this. Sorry. So magnetic lines of force are defined something like this. So magnetic lines of force uh, starts from the North Pole and ends at South Pole. Same is the case for the, uh, this is, uh, you can say a three dimensional structure. Imagine this as a three dimensional structure. So here, suppose I have uh, another magnetic lines of force and which is crossing at this point. So if I draw a magnetic lines of force, which is crossing like this, uh, do you think this is correct at this point? What happens at this point? So at, uh, if I have a line which is crossing at this point, that means, let's say, let's say there is one magnet. If I put a small magnet over here, it will be a north-south direction like this. And at the same time, it is pointing in this direction at the same time. So at one cross point, let's say this is my cross point. So at this cross point, one magnet will be in this direction, another magnet will be in this direction. And this is not possible. Means at the at the same point, magnetic uh, magnet is having two direction at the same point. This is not possible. Magnet will be either in one direction or other direction at one point. At uh, Let's say uh, if I measure at this point, it will be either in this direction or it will be in, the, in this direction. But it will not have, you can say, uh, two direction at a time. That's why magnetic field lines or electric field line should not cross each other. So if this is the electric uh, field lines, that means if I have a test charge positive, let's say negative test charge is there, that will follow this uh, this path. Okay. Similarly, this magnetic lines of force is uh, the path along which we can say uh, imaginary magnetic uh, pole that will move. So we can see magnetic lines of force by using uh, some iron fillings and that and similarly we can see the uh, electric lines of uh, sorry we cannot see electric lines of force like this this is convention but magnetic lines of force we can see by using uh, can say a small uh, bar magnet and some iron fillings uh, th th there is one uh, experiment based on that so we will now move to important operator that is a del operator del operator has uh, you can say uh, done a tremendous you can say applications in the physics so del itself is a you can say a, an operator so it is defined by dava, uh, i cap dava y dava x plus j cap dava y dava y plus k cap dava y dava z so this is an operator uh, so del itself has no uh, you can say physical uh, meaning but it is a vector quantity but when we uh, this del operator operates on some quantity it, uh, it has some uh, important meaning. So first important thing, it is a gradient of scalar. So uh, gradient of scalar, it is defined by del operator. It operates on, let's say function phi. Let's say function phi is a function of x, y, and z. And so this is defined as a gradient of scalar. It is a vector quantity. Obviously, it should be a vector quantity. And it gives maximum space rate of change of the scalar field. So in order to give the example, I will give uh, 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 some example so that you can understand this uh, gradient of scalar field uh, in a better way. Let's say I have this surface and uh, it has a potential, let's say Q1. 
let's say I have another surface. It has potential Q2. So let's say, uh, let's say Q1 is higher than Q2. So the uh, del operator will give, uh, uh, give the direction. Let's say I have two direction. So this is, let's say direction number one, this is direction number two. Okay. So uh, if this is the perpendicular uh, distance between the two surfaces, which are, you can say spherical and which is one is above the other, then this distance will be minimum distance. Okay. So uh, the maximum space rate of change of the scalar field, it is given by along this path. Okay. So path number two. So they will give the direction in which the, uh, you can say potential is increasing. I will give one, uh, you can say uh, uh, another example, which is familiar to all of you. Let's say I have some electromagnet, which is sorry, which is something like this. Okay. So another pole of that electromagnet, I will draw it here. So let's say I have a copper wire. I will wound it around the, uh, you can say iron coil, and I will take same wire to another side and wound it in the same direction. Okay, and finally take it away. And now I will join it and give, let's say I will give some DC electric field to these coils. Now, some battery is connected here. Now, if I consider the right hand thumb rule, uh, which is along this direction. So, uh, okay, so first of all, I will consider for the, let's say uh, this uh, right hand uh, magnet. So I will, uh, if I put the right hand and the fingers pointing along this uh, arrows, so I will get this as North Pole and this as South Pole. So if I take the same thing uh, at this place, so this will be South Pole and this will be North Pole. But here, this North and South Pole are closer to each other. Now there will be electric field that will be formed. And this electric field will be uniform at the center and it will be, you can say, it will change its magnitude and it will decrease as we go away from the center. Okay. Similarly, in this direction also, we can have electric field, which is something like this. But here, the electric lines of force, which are increasing in this direction. So, uh, magnetic, uh, sorry, magnetic uh, lines, magnetic uh, field is increasing. Uh, in this direction. So this gradient will have, okay, uh, this gradient will have direction like this. Okay. So, uh, so the meaning here, you can say the field is weak. Magnetic field is weak. And here the field is strong. Okay. So maximum space, space means we, we will define a mag, uh, gradient. Let's say here, gradient is, let's say, db upon dx let's say one dimensional uh, you can say uh, uh, gradient is defined so it is uh, with respect to space dx there is change in the magnetic field and magnetic lines of uh, magnetic field is increasing towards the center of the uh, this electromagnet similarly if i draw it with uh, uh, along this direction it will be increasing in this direction so don't look this uh, picture as you can say uh, you are looking in the two dimensional space in three dimensional case uh, we will see from the uh, from outside to inside the magnetic uh, magnetic you can say field is increasing that's why the direction of the uh, gradient will be from the weaker field to the stronger field so maximum space rate change of the, the scalar field and here scalar field uh, uh, scalar field maybe uh, you, you may define different fields so that is given by the gradient of a, you can say a scalar function now we will move to next uh, next uh, that is the divergence of the vector uh, okay so there are three possibilities first possibility is del of some scalar function that is you can say uh, gradient then there are two possibilities one is del dot some uh, function a bar or del cross a bar so these three possibilities are there so uh, in order to define or explain the divergence of a, a vector, we have defined divergence of vector as del dot, let's say, v or del dot some function, vector function v, where let's say del is defined as i cap dava y dava x plus j cap dava y dava y plus k cap dava y dava 
z so this is your uh, you can say del operator which is a dot uh, we have a dot product with the vx let's say i cap plus vy j cap plus vz k cap okay so here it is important to note this vx is not necessary to contain any term which has you can say uh, you can say uh, this vx uh, need not to contain any term with x uh, you can say this vx may be something like this vx may be 2yz okay vx can be 2yz or it can be let's say uh, vx is equal to x square y okay so some uh, some student has confusion that they consider this vx as let's say uh, they consider it should contain a uh, x term but it is not necessary vx can have a uh, uh, term without x also okay now divergence is defined so this is uh, now uh, it becomes like something like this so we know that i uh, i dotted with i this is equal to 1 because i into i into cos of 0 cos 0 is 1 that's why it becomes 1 and similarly i dotted with some let's say j this is equal to 0 because i and j are perpendicular to each other and j cos to this product as like this dava vx upon dava x plus dava vy upon dava y plus dava vz upon dava z so this is the uh, scalar you can say uh, uh, divergence which is defined but uh, important thing to note here this is a, a scalar quantity so output is a scalar quantity okay I, output is a, a scalar quantity now in order to uh, uh, understand the meaning of the this divergence we have uh, one sen a sentence uh, uh, to explain the meaning of the divergence of a vector field so net amount of flux outflow of a vector field per unit volume that is defined by the divergence of a vector field so in order to explain it in a better sense i will give one example let's say i have one tank let's say i have one tank and there are two taps one tap is here and one second tap is here this is one tap and this is another tap so this tap uh, you can say fills the water inside the tank and the rate is let's say one liter per you can say per minute and second is two liter uh, so two liter per minute okay so if this first uh, you can tap fills the water inside this tank and second uh, removes the water from the tank so i have to let's say uh, at a particular point one liter uh, one liter per minute uh, is the rate and one liter per minute is the outlet so net flow in of the water from this tank is zero whenever whatever inlet and whatever outlet is there it, if it is same then net outflow is zero let's say in the second case the uh, inlet is 1 liter per, uh, per per minute and outlet is 2 liter per minute so in that case outlet is more as compared to inlet so in that case uh, you can say this uh, uh, divergence will exist because net outflow of the liquid is existing there so uh, net outflow is there that's why divergence is there and that divergence is positive quantity so positive when it is positive when net outflow is there it is negative when net inflow is there okay so let's say through this uh, i have the same tank and let's say 5 liter per uh, 5 liter per minute is the uh, mm -hmm. the water that is coming from the tap number 1 and 0 liter per minute is going out that means tap 2 is closed so this you can say this uh, tank you can say accumulates the water so in that case also we say that this uh, there is net outflow but that is negative okay so divergence basically gives us the net uh, you can say net amount of flux that is outflow of a vector uh, field okay and that is per unit volume now i will uh, explain this in terms of uh, in order to explain the mag magnetic monopole do not exist we have an important equation that we write it as del dot b is equal to zero so this b is the magnetic uh, field which uh, which uh, which contains two parts one is the applied electric uh, applied magnetic field plus 
the magnetic field uh, you can say generated inside the material but let's say if i have a magnet as we have done earlier say it is not pole and this is pole and the top pole Okay. Now I have chosen one region of space. In space, let's say I have chosen one region of space here. Say I have a wall. Okay. So, what? Okay. So in this model, this line is entering and same line is going out. And I told you the entire equation. Okay. So this entire equation. Okay, so the potential, uh, magnetic potential. Magnetic tensor force is going out. Okay, this flux will be zero. Divergence will be zero in this case. Now you will say, let's say I have a positive charge. Okay, and if I try to draw these lines okay and at particular point let's say i have chosen one cube over here i have chosen one cube over here and now you will say whatever line is going inside same line is coming out so here also del dot e should be equal to zero are you uh, okay so uh, so you are uh, thinking in a uh, correct line but there is one important uh, thing that you are missing so what is that important thing here i told you this red uh, red or you can say uh, this uh, you can say whatever line magnetic lines are uh, line, uh, lines of force that i have drawn these are equipotential but these lines are not equipotential okay so here let's say uh, at this particular at entering point the potential may be let's say 10 uh, some uh, 10, uh, 10 in some fi units and uh, at the outlet the potential may be 5 Okay, so entering is 10 and uh, outlet is 5. That's my that's why the whatever is entering and whatever is coming out that is not equal equal. That's why some quantity non zero quantity will be there. So del dot E will not be equal to zero. Here, equipot, equip, uh, you can say equi uh, potential surfaces will be a spherical surface around this positive charge. If I try to draw, uh, you can say volume uh, element and if the uh, elect, uh, electric electric Kinds of force is say like a circular, so in that case it would be a zero, and that is only possible if there is no charge inside the this uh, imaginary circular or spherical surface, and that is that we call it as a Gaussian surface. So we know that del dot E is equal to zero only if that surface uh, surface is free from the any charges. So this divergence and gradient are important uh, part, uh, uh, and the last part that is remaining. That is the curl of a vector field. So, uh, uh, as we have a C, there are gradient, then divergence. Now it is a curve. So let's say I have some uh, field, okay, and uh, curl. Uh, sorry, uh, curl of that field is defined like this. Let's say del cross E bar, which is equal to some quantity. So what does this tells us? The maximum line uh, integral expressed per unit area of the closed path. Uh, or the surface. So this is, you can say, a little bit mathematical definition. So, uh, for example, uh, we will assume it as okay. So mathematically, let's say I have uh, some electric field that is defined. So del cross E will be defined. Let's say uh, some field is defined. E x i cap plus E y j cap plus E z k cap. These fields are defined, and del cross E. It is given by I cap, J cap, and K cap. Here it is dava by dava x, dava by dava y, and dava by dava z. And this is E x, E y, and E z. So this is defined. Del cross is defined like this. So this gives you a maximum line integral expressed per unit area of a closed path or a surface. So curl is zero. That means if we have, let's say, a vector field V bar is defined, let's say V x i cap, V y j cap plus V z k cap, 
So if vector field V bar is defined and we have calculated a curve del cross, let's say V bar. So if it is zero, that means the field, uh, uh, the field is irrotational. If it is non-zero, that means field is rotational. So basically curl gives us rotation of the field. So if something is rotating, then the curl of that quantity, that physical quantity is positive. I will give one simple example. Let's say I have a river. In that river, top water is at higher speed. Let's say 10 meter per second is the velocity of the top water layer. And at the bottom, water speed is less. Okay. So we will assume the speed of the water at the bottom is let's say 5 meter per second. And if I have a let's say a, a drum or a, with some uh, ar uh, some arrangement so that okay so I have some shaft over here and this is my drum. So if water is moving a fast, uh, with a faster rate from the top surface and slower rate from the bottom surface, this faster rate water will pull this shaft. Okay, this pull this shaft and and this dr this drum will rotate in this direction. Okay, and because the force exerted from the bottom is lesser as compared to force exerted at the top, so it will continuously rotate, or you can say it will rotate. Um, that's why we can say this field is. We can say this field has a rotational property, and if we calculate the curl. So let's say if I calculate the curl of this vector, some field V bar, then this will not be equal to zero. Okay, so it will be non-zero. So in that case, the uh, you can say uh, curl is non-zero for the uh, uh, same case. So basically, curl gives some rotation. Uh, so whenever rotation of the uh, field rotation is there uh, inside the field, so we say that the curl exists in that case. Okay. So now we will move to next problem. Then there are some vector identities which are repeatedly asked by the uh, uh, so many you can say NGP uh, examinations. We will see quickly one or two. Okay, so uh, divergence of curl is zero. Just now we have told you, uh, I have told you that divergence of curl is zero. What does it mean? Let's say I have taken divergence of a curl. Let's say we uh, del cross v. Okay, let's say uh, V bar is a potential. Okay, V bar is a vector potential and I have taken the curl of that vector potential. And now I have taken the divergence of this vector potential. Okay, now first thing you should remember, many students get confused. We should not put this dot and cross arbit uh, arbitrarily at any point. You can put this dot and cross whenever we have two vectors and then only we can use this uh, uh, dot and cross. Otherwise, you have to just skip this dot and cross. Okay. Now, divergence of curl is zero. So we have, let's say, curl. That means some vector field is there, v uh, v bar, and which is rotating. Okay. So if it is rotating, obviously, it will uh, the net outflow will be zero. Let's say I have some source which is continuously rotating in one uh, one direction. Okay. So at one particular point, if I uh, have some volume element, okay, and if I check what is inlet and what is outlet, outlet. So whatever is going in, same is coming out. That's why divergence or net outflow from the system will be equal to zero. That is the reason divergence of curl is equal to zero, and that is already defined. Now second quantity field produced by the gradient of a scalar is irrot irrotational. Just now I told you. If the uh, curl is defined, let's say curl of V bar is defined, and if it is zero, okay, if it is equal to zero, we say that the field V bar is irrotational. Now, the field produced by the gradient of a scalar is, is uh, irrotational. So, let's say I have V bar uh, del operator, a curl is defined, which uh, this field is produced by gradient. So, del of, let's say, uh, some uh, function F bar is defined. So let's say, <coughs> sorry. So some function is some f uh, f is a function, a scalar function, and uh, you can say del for, uh, del f is defined as a gradient. So we have calculated gradient, and gradient of you can say 
scalar uh, sorry uh, curl of a gradient of a scalar function that is equal to zero why it should be equal to zero because uh, if we define the gradient i told you the gradient is the maximum rate at which the uh, maximum space rate at which the field is changing f field is changing so if the field is changing and maximum rate uh, along that direction we are going so there is no question of rotation of the field okay so the field will not rotate so that's why the field produced by the gradient of a scalar is irrotational that means curl of the uh, uh, gradient of a scalar function is equal to zero and there are proofs you can say you can easily uh, uh, do the proofs of these books or uh, uh, this uh, identities because it is given in most of the books so there are conservative vector fields it is rotational so again uh, if the field is uh, conservative okay so if the field is conservative then uh, it means let's say i have some uh, field which is defined something like this some field is there if it is uh, conservative that means it is it has some function let's say u is some function so grad, uh, if we can find okay if we can find a scalar function whose gradient is equal to uh, some field okay then that field is conservative let's say let's say i have uh, uh, some field let's say f which is let's say a vector field which is defined let's say on x y and z and if i can write a gradient of some function u this u function may be a function of x y z and if i find a gradient of some uh, 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 scalar function u x y z and if it is equal to my vector field f bar if i find a, any one such field then in that case this f bar is a conservative field if it is conservative let's say f bar is conservative then what is the told conservative vector field is irrotational irrotational means del cross f bar is equal to zero obviously it should be equal to zero because del cross f is nothing but del of u because it is a conservative okay so if it is conservative it's it should be a gradient of that of uh, uh, some scalar function should be equal to the field if it is the true then this should be equal to zero it is same you can say thing as uh, the second property and then the you can say last operator laplacian equation and poisson's equation these are direct okay so these all you can say vector identities are directly asked in the question uh, papers so we will directly discuss this one by one then there is you can say laplacian operator laplacian operator i think all of you know it is defined as del square over one some fun function let's say phi so if it is equal to zero then we say that it is a laplacian equation and if it is let's say uh, defined like this del square or operate on uh, some function phi and if it is equal to rho upon epsilon naught it is called as poisson's equation we have direct question based on this we will see these questions uh, when we solve that questions now there are some uh, uh, vector identities which are repeatedly asked in the ngp examinations so i think you should remember all these identities because a uh, similar identities are uh, you can say important whenever you solve uh, ngpa question papers so for example uh, laplacian operator on uh, operating on ln of r where this r is you should remember r bar is x i cap plus y j cap and j k k cap this is position operator uh, position uh, vector and uh, this mod of r sometimes it is called as just r it is defined as square root of x square plus y square plus z square okay and this is the you can say magnitude of length of that uh, point from the origin so it is defined a uh, del square operating on one upon uh, one upon r it is equal to zero and similarly all these uh, you can say quantities are there note uh, del square operating r raised to n it is n r raised to n minus 2 this two factor is there most of the student miss this two that's why you should pay uh, special attention at this place similarly this uh, third uh, you can say you know, uh, uh, fifth uh, uh, vector identity is also given so now uh, we will solve problems uh, so we can uh, see easily uh, how we can use the things uh, in the problems okay so before that we will see uh, there are three cartesian uh, uh, coordinate systems so you know that these co coordinate systems are there so one is uh, rectangular coordinate system another is spherical and third is cylindrical we will quickly see 
uh, the volume element or let's say uh, uh, some uh, sort of you can say figures of these coordinate systems okay so that it will be easy for us to solve the problems now in uh, in this x y z coordinate system or if you can say cartesian coordinate system there are uh, some certain things that you should you must remember so there is only one thing that i should uh, tell you okay see here uh, we have let's say this is x axis this is y axis and this is z axis many students make mistake they directly draw the uh, system and they don't care whether it is right handed or left handed so for example let's say you cannot draw the structure uh, or this uh, you can say coordinate system something like this let's say this is x let's say this is z and this is y okay so if we go from x to y and take the cross product so is it x cross y is it giving me z cap in this figure no it is not giving so in this case okay i will circle this part so in this case this is x cross y it is not equal to z cap it is equal to minus z cap understood so you should not make such mistakes while drawing such coordinate systems so always remember whenever you take x cross y it should give you z cap then only whatever result that you are discussing that will be according to right handed coordinate systems okay there are some uh, students uh, that they make such mistakes that's why i have just uh, written this thing then there is you can say another coordinate system that is uh, uh, you can say whatever okay uh, uh, whatever uh, plane passing through the point p is called as uh, coordinate planes and there are uh, if the two planes are crossing each other then uh, you can say we get a coordinate lines so for example uh, x y z coordinate system is there so i think you must be remembering all these things now spherical coordinate uh, polar coordinate system here the some uh, you can say formulas you need to uh, uh, you can say pay attention so in spherical polar coordinate system the position of the point is fixed uh, by the three dimension uh, three coordinates r theta and phi so here uh, you should remember uh, certain thing we get r as uh, okay so r is nothing but you can say distance of the point from the origin here point p is there whose coordinates are r theta and phi remember this point p is on the sphere it is not inside the sphere okay so we are looking at a three dimensional object which is a sphere and this point p is r uh, p has coordinates r theta and phi so r means the distance of the point from the origin theta is the angle made with the uh, by this position you can say vector uh, with respect to z axis and phi is the angle made by this projection of this uh, you can say uh, uh, r bar on the uh, x y plane okay so projection of this uh, uh, vector on the x y plane and the angle made by that projection with respect to positive x axis so if we use this notation here or uh, uh, if you will understand it in uh, clearly the r will be uh, under root x square plus y square plus z square and theta is cos inverse or you can say we can use uh, sin inverse or we can use tan inverse based on the uh, which coordinates we are using okay so here uh, many students get confused between theta and phi okay so just make sure you should not get confused between that then uh, we have a cylindrical coordinate system so in the cylindrical coordinate system so we have uh, you can say transformation equations uh, sometimes it is written a row okay row is the distance of the point on the cylinder from the origin sometimes it is written as r okay so you should not just get confused whenever we are discussing more than one uh, coordinate system in that case we use row sometimes we use r okay sometimes we use yes okay so but it is specified whenever we are solving the problem okay now uh, a volume element uh, in the uh, cartesian coordinate system it is given uh, by dx dy dz okay so it is directly dv is equal to dx dy and dz whereas in case of spherical polar coordinate system we have volume element which is given by r square sin theta dr t theta and d phi i think you will uh, you will be able to do this uh, you can say things uh, easily so i will uh, explain quickly for the uh, cylinder uh, spherical you will have to do it for the uh, uh, cylindrical 
so in case of uh, in case of this uh, spherical polar coordinate system uh, the angle made with the positive uh, z axis it is theta by the position operator uh, position vector r bar so we, if we change this uh, r, bar, r bar slightly we get d theta change so we have changed the theta by d theta by small amount here we have used some ideas so let's say this is point uh, uh, s let, let's say this is point s so here we have used one idea let's say we have considered this uh, triangle p o s in triangle p o s we have d theta which is let's say uh, some let's say sine of d theta d theta is small angle sine of uh, uh, d theta will be equal to d theta if d theta is very very small and theta is in radian this is not true uh, if the theta is in degrees okay this is true when theta is in radian so sine d theta is equal to d theta which is equal to assume that ps is opposite side okay so ps is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse here both hypotenuse and you can say uh, okay so we will consider uh, something like this we have assumed a triangle which is something like this okay so this is your d theta and this is your let's say p this is s and this is your origin we have assumed that p s is a straight line and this d theta is a small angle small change in the angle theta so this is origin o now what we have considered considered uh, there is right angle at the s place we can consider right angle at p uh, at point p also so this implies p s is equal to r into d theta so that's why the dimension of this uh, ps is equal to r d theta similarly we have done it here so the projection of this uh, this op so op is nothing but r sin theta into d, theta, d phi is the length of this side okay length of this side is r sin theta d phi okay so we have used this uh, uh, to calculate the uh, sides of this uh, volume element so we have a uh, three so you can say sides of this uh, uh, you can say imaginary cube so one side is r sin theta d phi because this this side is same here okay this side is same here uh, okay and the one side is r d theta and one side is dr change in the r so that's why we are getting the volume element r square sin square sin theta d theta d phi and dr okay so like this way you can do it for the cylindrical coordinate system this is simpler in case of single cylindrical coordinate system now we will uh, consider a few problems okay so pay uh, proper attention i have given answers also so the position vector of particle of mass m is expressed as r is equal to so whenever this is r uh, it is volt that means it is r bar it is a vector quantity and i cap j cap and k cap are the unit vectors so the position vector particle of mass m is equal to x i cap plus i j cap plus z k cap the value of del dot r cap is so such questions will be asked so in order to solve these questions so this is you can say answer so solution is directly given here so i will explain it so first of all when, whenever r cap is given so it is 1 upon r uh, 1 upon r is uh, r is nothing but just now i have told you this is your r r is magnitude of the uh, vector and it is given by under root x square plus y square plus z square this is you can say in general so any vector r cap is equal to 1 upon r uh, i x plus uh, j y plus k j so this is your uh, r bar so this is your r bar r bar divided by r that is your r cap so uh, del dot r cap is equal to del dot 1 upon r into x i cap plus y j cap plus j k cap so if we operate okay so there is a dot between the vectors i told you there is a dot between the vectors so i into dava by dava x plus j dava by dava y plus k dava by dava z this is your del operator which is dotted with the vector quantity which is r cap upon r so if i take the dot product so first i have to take the uh, you can say uh, uh, derivation uh, with respect to dava y dava x of these three quantities so x y z 
So we have to use one idea, i cap dotted with the i cap that is equal to zero, oh, sorry, that is equal to one, and i cap dotted with the j cap that is equal to one. And similarly, i cap dotted with the k cap that is also equal to, sorry, this is zero and this is also zero. So we have to use these identities just uh, earlier also I have explained. So if you use that identities, you can quickly uh, go for each and we can calculate i cap dot, uh, okay. So if I go for the first derivation, it will be x upon under root x square plus y square plus z square. So if you see it carefully, you can calculate the derivative of these functions and you will understand it, it is equal to uh, this, okay. So I will show it for the x, okay. So if I calculate it for dabba y dabba x of, let's say x upon square root of x square plus y square plus z square. If I do it for this, I can do it like this. So use the u upon v and its derivation. So it is u dash v minus u v dash divided by v square. So if you use that here, so derivative, derivative of x with respect to x, it will be one into this quantity as it is so it is i will write it as r okay minus u as it is that means r as it is sorry uh, x as it is into the derivative of uh, this uh, denominator so it will be uh, 1 by 2 into x square plus y square plus z square raised to minus into derivation Sorry, I will do it somewhere else. Okay, I will do it on the right hand side. Okay, so, so there is like this one into derivation of the second part as it is it is under root x square plus y square plus z square minus u as it is that means x as it is into derivation of v that will be 1 by 2 into x square plus y square plus z square raised to 3 by 2 okay so derivation of that is 3 by 2 into derivation with respect to x of this quantity that is 2x Okay, so uh, if we do the derivation like this and divide it by the square of the denominator, so it will be x square plus y square plus z square. Okay, so it will be something like this. So it is, uh, okay, so it is, let's say, r upon, it is, what is this? This is r square, r upon r square minus, this will be, x square into r raised to so if i take these things uh, uh, it will be 3 by 2 so if i uh, do the further calculations what i will get is this will be 1 upon r minus it will be x upon r raised to um, what is the mistake that i have done so minus should be there okay just just one minute so x square uh, okay sorry what i did here okay so this x square plus y square plus z square raised to 3 by 2 so raised to 1 by 2 is your r and its cube is there now so it should not be like 3 by 2 okay it should be r cube i'm sorry so it should be r cube divided by r square so if i use uh, uh, the so it will be x square is there okay so x square divided by this r cube is there okay. so that will be there 
so similarly if i do it for the y uh, y part and similarly if i do it for the z part then i will get uh, equation so this is for x part similarly we will get for uh, y part i will get 1 upon r minus y square upon r uh, uh, sorry it will be again uh, r is to 3 by 2 so it will be uh, isn't it am i right just wait i let me do it again so this the square uh, this part is there the square is there this will be q so rq okay so it will be like this uh, okay so if you do these calculations you will get this answer just wait huh? I may be missing something. Okay, there is uh, some small space. That's that's why. Uh, what I did, I will just check once. Uh, x square plus y square plus z square. That is fine. U into v minus again u and derivation of v. That is one by two. Uh, okay. Uh, one by two. Okay. Sorry. 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 This this should be minus 3 by 2 isn't it well, okay so 1 by 2 into x square plus y square minus 1 that's why it should be minus 1 by 2 again okay so um, okay what i will do i will do it again at the end because there is small space that's why i'm missing some things i'm sorry for that Okay, I will uh, I will do it at the end because there is lack of space. Okay, now I will move to uh, okay. So here, here uh, if I take the derivative, uh, or I should I, I will do it again here. Otherwise, if I leave this, it so if I take the derivative, I can use another uh, thing also. So I can use x into under root x square plus y. Sorry x into i can use u into v rule also that is also fine so x into uh, so it will be x square plus y square plus z square raised to uh, minus 1 by 2 so i have to take the derivative with respect to x so it will be uh, derivation with respect to x is 1 okay and second that is square plus y square to minus 1 by 2 plus the first term as it is x as it is into derivation of the second term so it will be minus 1 by 2 into uh, x square plus y square plus z square raised to minus 3 by 2 into derivation with respect to x that is 2x now it will become so it will become like 1 upon r it will be 1 upon x square plus y square plus z square that's why it will be 1 upon r plus this x into x and this 2 will get cancelled so it will be minus here so x into x that will be x square into this will be uh, r uh, sorry r is to minus 3 it will be r is to minus 3 into x square okay so it will be like 1 upon r minus x square upon r cube so similarly, if we do it for the, uh, the uh, with respect to uh, second derivative, if we do it with respect to y, it will be one upon r minus y square upon r cube. And similarly, if we do it for the z, it will be one upon r minus z square upon r cube. Okay. So if I add these terms, first term will get added. So first term this 1 upon r 1 upon r and 1 upon r will get added so it will become 3 by r and this x square y square and z square that will get added here like this and divided by this r cube so r cube is nothing but x square plus y square plus z square raised to 3 by 2 so this 3 by 2 is there here r square is there so uh, lastly we will get 3 by r minus so x square plus y square plus z square divided by this small uh, this will be r is to 3 by 2 
this top quantity is nothing but uh, r uh, you can say r square okay so if i you uh, uh, subtract it from here so finally i will get wait Okay, so I get it is one upon r. So we get two upon r as you were. Now we will move to the next part. And in final, okay, so these questions are questions which we will get back from the previous question. So see the set of questions. And in final, this is one element in the circle system is given to the square. So we have to just so we already seen the systems. We have seen properly. Let's say, because in the practicing system, it is dx, d and dz. Okay. For or uh, uh, answer the proper answer. This is the second question, which was asked in the MP20. Then there is one important question. An electric field defined in the Cartesian region is given by uh, x by is x i plus c j plus b The set of values of parameters a, b, and d is the available electric field uh, is or r. So remember, there are uh, more than one uh, uh, answer that can be uh, true of a particular thing. Uh, you should, uh, whenever, uh, whenever uh, question is given, first of all, you should understand the question properly. If you can understand the question properly, you can uh, go for the answer. So electric field is given by this quantity. And the electric field must be conservative. So this is very important statement. If you know this thing, you can solve this problem. So if the field is conservative, then the curl of that field. Uh, So your PPT is not visible. Uh, please could you check your uh, connection, please? you or not so i was uh, 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 i cannot see you i have to interrupt in i'm sorry for that so so the electric field it is defined like this and, and it must be hmm? okay no. so uh, the electric field it is given by e of a x i cap plus c z j cap so electric field is given and we have to find the whether the electric field must be conservative it
the electric field field is conservative we have to if the field is uh, conservative sati sati i'm sorry okay sati please come here okay okay team okay if the field is uh, uh, if the field is conservative we have to find the uh, curl of that field i cap j cap and k cap so double by double x uh, double by double y and double by double z i have already told you so we have to whenever we have to find the curl so del cross e bar it is defined so so del is i cap double by double x plus j cap double by double y plus k cap double by double z that's why we have to use i uh, uh, double by double x double by double y and double by double z at the second row of this determinant and third uh, third row we have to use the coefficient along the x axis y axis and z axis so so we have a x c z and 6by uh, so we have ax B, uh, cz and 6by along the x y and z axis these are the components of the electric field so we have to find the uh, curl of this electric field that's why we have to first take the uh, curl like this so we have to take the uh, I, i cap into in bracket uh, double by double y into double by, uh, 6by and uh, double, uh, then the double by double z into uh, cz so if we take the derivative here uh, this is partial derivative remember here so if we take the partial derivative here with respect to z then it uh, this will become zero because we are taking the partial derivative with respect to z and the uh, constants are ax that's why it will become zero separately this will become zero similarly here there is no x term that's why this will become zero then this will become zero and similarly this will also become zero and only term becomes uh, only first term is remaining so i cap so take the derivative with respect to y so it will be 6b and take the derivative with respect to z that will be c so i cap uh, i times so we have we have obtained i times 6b minus c and that should be equal to zero if it is the case we have to substitute all the values okay so if i put the first value okay second value like this way if i start putting here uh, putting it here so 6 into b value that is 1 minus 6 into uh, sorry c c value is 6 so so this is possible only when i consider third option okay all other options are there but where the curve will not become uh, curve will not become zero उटन and v vector is given and we have to see uh, we have to show that is so this r is for vector b so if we use uh, our yeah, so vector vector but we need to find so i have already told you so if this is let's say uh, sorry if this is vector number b so this is vector b bar and this is c bar and if i take the cross product it will be perpendicular to it so this is n cap which is perpendicular to b and c and this uh, let's say i have third vector which is let's say a bar which is in the same plane if a bar is in the same plane so it will be perpendicular to n cap so a bar dotted with b cross c this will become zero so this is you can say a vector which is perpendicular to b and c but if a bar is in the same plane 
So dot product of a bar with this uh, n cap will become zero because a dot with some uh, a dot b cross c, that is a into mod of uh, you can say it will become a uh, magnitude of a bar into magnitude of uh, b cross c and into cos of angle uh, cos of 90. So cos 90 is zero. That's why it will become zero. And so we have to use this. Uh, uh, so we know this a dot b cross c is nothing but the we have to find the determinant by, with the coefficients. So we have substituted the coefficient of L bar, B bar, and V bar, and we have calculated the determinant. So 3 into, if we solve this determinant, you will find that 2A is equal to 21 is the, uh, uh, you can say, uh, value. So we get the value of alpha, which is equal to 10.5. So whenever such question is asked, so let's say, uh, sometimes, they the, sometimes they will ask the coefficient. So it is not necessary to make We have to check whether it is uh, is, uh, is it equal to zero or is it equal to non-zero quantity. That is the important thing. Uh, you can say fifth. Uh, uh, you can say uh, fifth problem. The correct statements are okay. This was asked in the NGPA 2017. The gradient of a scalar field is a vector. So correct. Gradient of a scalar field is a vector. So we have seen del of some function phi of x, y, z or phi of r. It is a vector quantity. Obviously, it should be a vector quantity. Second, a gradient of a scalar field uh, phi of r is the greatest rate of change of with respect to space. This is also we have seen. It is greatest rate, rate of change of with respect to space. And third thing, gradient of 1 upon r Okay, so gradient of one upon r is equal to r upon r cube. So that is also we have seen in our uh, while we solve the problems. Okay, so uh, all these quantities are uh, known to us. So uh, we have to just uh, uh, see the electric field part. So fourth part that is electric field E bar is electromagnetic wave is given by E is equal to minus uh, del uh, F. So we know that this is wrong statement because uh, it is not given like this. So that uh, so first three statements are correct. So option will be A, B, and C. All these three are uh, correct, and D is not correct. So if you don't know this quantity, let's say gradient of one upon R, you can easily calculate it separately also. So then uh, third, you can say quantity is there a conservative force uh, satisfied. These are you can say problems you can directly solve. So for the conservative force, you know these two answers are there. So for the conservative force, either del cross F should be equal to zero or uh, uh, you can say line integral over the, okay, so uh, del cross F is nothing but in line integral over the closed path of, uh, you can say, uh, uh, over the closed path of the, you can say, say let's say del cross F is there. So it is not, uh, by Stokes theorem, we have uh, cross product is converted into dot, uh, uh, dot uh, line integral. Uh, and it is uh, over the closed path. And so if these two quanti quantities are true, then that means it is, uh, F is, you can say, conservative force. If F is a conservative force, I have already told there is some gradient of, uh, there is some gradient of some scalar function is defined. So scalar functions gradient should be equal to F bar, then only this, you can say F is conservative force. And if F is conservative force, if I put this del of, uh, del of, uh, sorry, del of U here, so del cross, del of u this will become zero because gradient of a uh, curl of a gradient is equal to zero that is the reason these two quantities are equal to zero so c and d uh, are the options now for the if f of r is a scalar function of a position the the expression uh, is uh, evaluated to have a value so we have a different uh, functions f may be a function f of r may be a function of some r let's say r uh, r or r square you can substitute one or two solutions and you will find that if we substitute any value of r uh, f of r we will get this function is equal to zero so for that purpose you have to do one uh, small calculation let's say uh, let's say a del cross uh, function let's say it is r square into r bar upon r r cap is nothing but r bar upon r so it will not nothing but del uh, cross with the uh, you can say uh, del cross mm, so it will be r into r bar 
now you have to solve this uh, integration uh, so this det determinant quickly so it will be i cap j cap and k cap so r into uh, this will be uh, okay so here r will del cross or we will do it for a simple case let's say we will consider just r so rr will get cancelled we will get just r bar okay so del cross r bar r bar is nothing but i x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap so now i j k is there now uh, dava y dava x is there dava y dava y is there and dava y dava z is there of x y and z if you do this uh, inter determinant so see if we take the determinant of z with respect to y it will be zero similar determinant of this will be zero so all the determinant is equal to zero that's why we can say a uh, scalar function of a, a position uh, uh, this will be uh, equal to zero you can substitute uh, f of a, uh, f of r is equal to r square r cube any value then also you will uh, find that this is uh, going to become a zero you will try uh, you just try it with the uh, r square or r cube then also it becomes zero now uh, uh, which of the following forces are conservative forces now uh, in order to solve such problem check uh, curl of a conservative force is zero that is already discussed so the curl of uh, two functions are there so first function and the you can say gradient is defined in the second case so in for the first and second case the curl is zero that's mean that means a uh, for a and b the curl is zero that's means and that means uh, for this function the field is conservative forces and so field here it is the forces these are conservative forces in the third case if i uh, try to find the uh, you can say curl it will not become zero because it is uh, time varying and in the four, in the fourth case in the option d it depends on the r so that's why if i try to find the uh, uh, you can say uh, curl of this four, uh, uh, curl of this field that will uh, that is that is not necessary uh, will become zero that's why it is not conservative force now we will move to the uh, ninth problem. Poisson's equation potential V can be written as, okay, so directly Poisson's equation is asked. I have already told you, we have to directly give the answers for the Poisson's equation. So it is, uh, 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 we can say, if we see the option number uh, A, it is del square V and dx square plus del square V upon del y square plus del square V upon del j square, which is equal to rho upon epsilon naught. So it is same. Uh, it is also uh, del square v. Okay. So option number A and option number D. In both the cases, the answer is same. Uh, okay. So option number A and D both are the answers. Now uh, tenth problem. Which of the following vector operations make the significant and is are correct? So it is necessary to make the vector operation significant and then we have to show uh, whether these are correct. So curl of a curl is always zero. It is not significant because defining curl of some curl quantity, let's say some vector v bar is there. So first curl is there and again finding a curl uh, and it is always a zero. That is not significant. So uh, so we will not consider that. So curl of grad is always zero. Now check this curl of gradient function. We have already discussed curl of gradient is always zero because the gradient is increasing in one direction if we are rotating that field that field will not rotate and uh, it is irrotational field so that means it will uh, always zero so option b is there and similarly if we go for the uh, go for the divergence of a curl is always zero so divergence del dot del cross v bar is there so divergence of a curl this will again become zero because if the field is rotating if curl is there, uh, if the curl is exist uh, existing, if the field is rotating, and if we try to find the divergence, that means net outflow, that net out outflow will not be possible for such fields. So in that case, the uh, you can say divergence is zero. And the last part, gradient of divergence is always zero. So gradient of divergence. So let's say I have some uh, sorry uh, gradient of divergence. So divergence is always zero it is not necessary okay it is not necessary because some divergence may be some quantity which is a scalar quantity and it is not necessary that divergence some quantity is there 
it will become zero. So that, that is not equal to zero. So option number B and C is the answer. Now we will move to the 11th problem. So a three-dimensional length, length element DL is defined, which is dx dy dz. Uh, dx by z may be expressed in the spherical polar coordinates r theta phi as like this. So if you see this uh, expression clearly, so we have to just tick the proper answer. So here there is some problem place. Okay. So it, the sign phi is defined. So it is option number C that is the correct option. Now we will move to the next problem. If you know this, uh, uh, you can say convergence, you can easily write these things. Now, one or two problems are uh, left. So Fourier series of the given uh, function f of x in the interval 0 to L is given by this. Then find the value of B2, that is the second coefficient for the f of x, which is given by x in the region 0 to L. So in order to solve the Fourier series, okay, so one or two problem may be asked based on this Fourier series. So it is Bn is equal to, uh, this is general expression. So it is given bn is equal to 2 by l 0 to l f of x into sin x n by x upon l into dx. This is the general expression. So f of x, this is given to be equal to x. If we substitute the value of f of x is equal to x in this expression and just integrate it with respect to x. So we will get, uh, so this is, uh, you can say common integ uh, integration and we have to substitute the value of n is equal to 2 because we have to find the second coefficient if we substitute the n is equal to 2 in this expression, you will get the final coefficient that is b2 is equal to pi by 2. So remember, uh, you have to uh, see the interval and accordingly you have to choose the uh, integration. Okay, and if you choose the integration, solve it quickly, you can get that answer very easily. Okay, so now we will move to the next problem. So vector a, b, c whose scalar triple product is 0 are coplanar justify. So if scalar product of let's say a a bar, uh, a bar dotted with b cross c, it is equal to zero. We have to show that these three vectors are coplanar. So let's say I will just show you here quickly. This is b bar and this is c bar. And if we take that b cross c, that will be perpendicular to this b and c. If it is perpendicular, any uh, let's say uh, any vector which is let's say uh, let let's say vector a is there. Okay, so somewhere vector a bar is there. So B cross C will be definitely perpendicular. So uh, if I try to find B cross C, it will be definitely perpendicular. And this, this will be perpendicular to this plane. Now, if I take the dot product A bar with this B cross C, okay. Now this A bar, if it is in the same plane, that will make angle 90. And then, so mod of A into mod of B into mod of C, that will give uh, that will give me mod of c into cos of 90. So now, now cos 90 is zero. That's why this whole you can say product becomes zero. If this b uh, if a bar lies in the plane uh, formed by the b and c, and that's why we can say that a dot b cross c is zero. Also, we can define. Uh, I I have already told uh, these are cyclics. So we can also write b dot. Uh, okay, so b dot c cross a or c dot a cross b okay so same thing is there only thing you have to first solve the uh, cross product the curl of a conservative force is zero i have already told if i, I have to find the curl of some conservative force it is always equal to zero because if f bar is conservative it is to be it is it is must condition the gradient of some function u of u is a function of x y z is to be there so if u is a function of some x y z and its gradient is defined then the function f bar is conservative but if i uh, write it here so del cross uh, sorry del u sorry what i did sorry just last part is remaining so del cross it will be del u which is equal to zero because gradient is there and if we find the curl of a gradient that will become zero and that uh, that property we have already seen so we have to see the solution of that property so uh, with this i will stop here uh, thank you for watching this so thank you for the watching so yeah okay
very nice very nice please start your camera camera shaji sir please start your camera sanjeev sir are there questions questions are there yes sir we will go for the question sessions uh, just yeah. we are waiting so that there uh, are sir on the camera so you can switch on the camera we'll go for the question and answer two questions are there yeah okay is it possible for you or suppose uh, can i ask the question hello you come you must come i would like to get a question some internet issue actually hmm ek ek second ah sir baat yeah yeah no problem start your camera okay so connectivity is always an issue there uh, sometimes it works good sometimes it doesn't and that makes a problem all the time doesn't matter yeah but it's very good that most of the times it goes well and uh, so we can say 1 to 10 per percent disturbance we have seen throughout the series okay yeah. okay not in everything yeah. 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 so thank you for your very, very informative talk now uh, can i go for question and answer session yes hello sir are you able to hear me kharab sir hello खरत सर आवाज येतोय का आर यू एबल टू हेअर अस आय थिंक यस सो वी हॅव फ्यू क्वेश्चन्स विल गो फॉर दॅट द क्वेश्चन इज दॅट कॅन यू एक्सप्लेन द ग्रॅव्हिटी ॲज अ टाइम ग्रेडियंट दिस इज नॉट डायरेक्टली रिलेटेड विथ अवर नो क्वेश्चन इज आस्क बट इज द अनदर कोऑर्डिनेट द स्टूडेंट्स हॅज कंसीडर and they are asking that can you explain the gravity as a time gradient no i couldn't get this okay, actually sir. this question so is not me. that yeah you can answer sir okay. how time gradient and gravity how these are connected to each other gravity is a gradient of the gravitational potential so when we take gravitational gradient of gravitational potential we get gravity so in fact there is no relation between time and gravity how the, how there can be a relation between time and gravity gravity is a static concept it depends on part of the whatever uh, okay. thing we were discussing so time gradient uh, is i don't think i don't may I, actually i haven't seen or i haven't learned this particular concept till yet maybe some of you might have heard so if you if you have you can go for that so here is some another question related with minkowski diagram so can you comment on it shaji sir shaji sir actually having some problem of network issue sir hmm sir are you khara sir are you able to hear no there is issue issue so minkowski space is actually four dimensional space in special theory of relativity we have three space coordinate and one is the time coordinate so this four dimensional space is called as minkowski space so in cartesian coordinate system we we represent point by coordinate x y and z that is called as coordinate point whereas in minkowski space we have to mention four four coordinate that is time coordinate by i to t that x y z and i c t this is called as event so minkowski space we we define every everything by event whereas in cartesian coordinate system in normal space we represent a point by coordinate point so coordinate point in minkowski space is the four dimensional space it is called as event actually there is a part of the special theory of relativity you can get more things about that when you go for higher mathematics and this special theory of relativity but at plus per as per as this ngp is concerned no such questions are asked there so uh, on the special theory right. i haven't seen a question there you are, you are absolutely right but the students are interested in such things actually more of the right. students 
interested in astronomy, astrophysics, and quantum mechanics. Yes, yes actually, yes. the good thing for us, since students mm -hmm. are going towards the quantum uh, quantum things and looking for the more scientific approach. So, uh, sir, actually, I have one question. Is actually the students are generally doing a mistakes. So, can you explain mm -hmm. for that purpose the difference between divergence and gradient? Yes. Since uh, most of so, the students are confusing in these two phenomena. Yes. See, basically, we operate this del operator or vector differential operator on the scalar field or scalar potential, scalar point function. So whenever this operation is, this is a simple mathematical operation where we operate direct, that is also called as directional derivative. This vector differential operator operated on scalar potential that gives me a vector quantity, which is called as vector field. And that is also called as gradient of the scalar field. So gradient of scalar field is a vector field. And this is also called as directional derivative, as I told earlier. So what directional derivative of this gradient represent? It represents the maximum space rate change of that potential. So for example, in gravitational field, as uh, we can saw there are different layers. So if I'm sitting in a building, so this base of this building is one layer and the roof of the building is the second layer. You find that there is a, some change in potential as we go from the surface of Earth to higher and higher level, Earth's potential goes on changing. And in which direction when I go, the rate of change of this potential with space, that is called as space rate of change of uh, uh, potential is found maximum. That shows you the direction of this particular uh, perpendicular. So if I go from, uh, from this particular down floor to any of the floor, by some making some angle to this surface, then this in that case, the rate of change of gravitational potential will be less. But when I go directly vertically, in that case, the rate of change of gravitational potential will be maximum. And that represents the gradient. So gradient of Earth's gravitational field is always pointing towards its center and no any other direction. So that's what the gradient. Whereas divergence is the, is the operation of this vector differential operator with the vector potential, vector field. So vector field is that is del bar dot v bar. So that operation is the scalar multiplication. And this multiplication gives you a scalar quantity. This divergence has very good, uh, what we say, its application uh, in the fluid flow, mm -hmm. in hydrodynamics, in electrostatics, in magnetostatics, everywhere. Wherever there is a certain field, it has to have certain divergence. So when this, that this divergence, there are three possible cases. Divergence may be positive sometimes, divergence may be negative sometimes, divergence may be zero term sometimes. Whenever divergence is positive, that means in that elect in that field, whatever field we have taken, the field lines that are entering into a particular volume and field line that are leaving, there is a some mismatch or there is some line entering are less than the line leaving. So such is case called as a positive divergence. So positive charge, electric single positive charge, whenever it is taken, we draw a electric field lines coming out of that positive charge. So it is the case of positive divergence. Whereas in case of negative part, uh, point charge, we show this electric field lines entering inside that. So in that case, it is taken to be a negative divergence. Same thing can be applied in case of compressible and incompressible fluids too. So in hydrodynamics, this divergence plays a very vital role. And the most important property of this divergence, as we have seen earlier, this del dot b bar is equal to always zero. So that is what we say that whenever we take any magnet and if this magnet is broken into whatever smaller pieces up to the level of atom or electron, still there remains these two poles, n pole and s pole. So this the magnetic monopole cannot be separated or isolated magnetic monopole is not possible because of this particular property of that magnetic field. Divergence of magnetic field is always equal to zero. That is one of the fundamental equation of this electrodynamics or that is one of the equation of this Maxwell's equation. And this property plays a very vital role as compared to the, uh, in, in this elect, in the entire field of mathematics as well as electrodynamics. And that separates electric field and magnetic field. In case of electric field, this is not the case. Del dot E bar is not equal to zero all the time. It is rho upon epsilon zero. That is what we are, one of the equation, Gauss law. And in case of magnetism, this del dot B bar is equal to zero. So this divergence property between or the difference of the electric field and magnetic field is their divergence. So that is why electric and magnetic fields are different to a certain extent. When we go for this electromagnetism, unification of these two, 
these two things are again the same these are the uh, manipulation uh, these are called as uh, two different things which are made from the one field that is called as electromagnetic field so these are, are some at higher level things but this is what the application of gradient and diverges as per my knowledge yeah very good sir actually very in well you have said that particularly gradient is concentrated towards the center while divergence is the property which are, is diverging so uh, with the number of examples you explain it in uh, very well way so actually one more question that is uh, can you uh, explain us that uh, how to represent n dimensional space this is the last one n dimensional space actually it is that is called as hilbert space or that is an imaginary space we cannot imagine this type of space uh, in practice n dimensional space is uh, actually uh, theoretically it is possible but physically at the most we can have 10 dimensional space but that is also at a very very micro level in the micro physics or particle physics we can have this type of concepts we say that all six dimensions engulf together and we get this four dimension so this this is a bit higher these studies are not up to graduate level maybe in post graduation and in that case when we go for hilbert spaces and like that this n dimensional concepts comes there uh, of course uh, the concept of space used in mathematics and concept of space so in physics phase space is more important than this uh, real space or the uh, euclidean space we take in mathematics so in physics this n uh, phase space that is px py pz and xyz this type of spaces can be taken to be six dimensional space eight dimensional space 10 dimensional space or n dimensional space but in mathematical methods of physics these concepts are there but they are at higher levels i think students at graduation level at present uh, most of the yes. students may not understand this concept yeah, yeah very good sir it's not an issue but uh, if they think in that line something some more step ahead then that is what the expectation in a science that uh, mm-hmm. they have to thought like uh, this way so on behalf of indian association of physics teachers sub regional council pune I'll, i would like to thanks professor shahji kharat he has delivered very enthusiastic talk and now i would like to ask to professor kan bharat kangude the, the president of iapt sub regional council pune to give the vote of thanks yes for the today's okay. talk yeah uh, on the behalf of iapt rc 08c pune sub region i express a deep gratitude towards professor shahji kharat sir Uh, for his extensive and elaborative discussion on the important topics from the mathematical methods of physics along with that he showed certain problems how simple problems are there once we understand the concept or we we understand the concept and if we are able to apply these concepts then it is very easy to solve such type of problems from the mathematical methods of physics uh, usually in section a there are one or two problems on this mmp and sometimes in section b b1 section in the second paper Uh, some of the problems that is what shown by him in the last slide such type of problems are asked i know his mathematical caliber his uh, experience in mathematics and uh, one of the uh, very bright students in a student uh, shahji was when he was in my college in anna sahib gifted this uh, uh, gift is by nature his mathematics is very strong and he can be one of the good teacher in this ferguson college when we consider his mathematical and physics so Uh, once again i say thank you all participants students uh, dr Sh- professor shahji kharat sir and uh, uh, secretary dr sandeep uh, kakade sir for taking all this pains taking effect efforts for uh, making this particular series successful at the same time uh, the science association of sp college as well as jesh and his friend shinde uh, both of these are again have done very nice work of organizing all these things they have spent almost 2 hours every day for making this activity successful so iapt rc as a chairman or president of this i express gratitude to us all and we declare here this particular thing is uh, this particular series is uh, this session is uh, uh, wind up yes. here now okay thank you yes sir one more announcement is there uh, so tomorrow there will be the uh, session of ngp preparation on nuclear physics and afterwards we will tell you about the details of this examinations with the uh, out of thanks of the particular series and the few minutes valedictory function 
so again i have uh, i would like to request you please join for the tomorrow session which is also a significant one for the ngb preparation and now here i would like to conclude this talk on today thank you yes okay thank you thank you and good night